Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my very biased collection, of course. Um, today I would like to tell you about prime numbers, or, well, not really, I would like to tell you about prime knots, really kind of, and prime numbers of knot theory. Um, I will explain what that means. So why are prime numbers so famous, so popular? That's a good question. I actually don't know the answer. So why are they so popular? Not quite clear to me. Anyway, there's a very basic number theoretical reasoning why they are at least important in certain branches of basic number theory, which would be uh, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. So everything can be factored in primes and primes are the basic building blocks and the factorization is essentially unique. And you can ask the, the same question actually for any type of mathematical object if you want, or maybe even for any type of object. So what are the prime factors of my theory? And for knots, it turns out that there is a very satisfying theory of prime factors of primes, and it's given by, surprise, surprise, prime knots. So let's just jump into it. And so a knot is really a three-dimensional object. I really love this illustration here. So knot is this three-dimensional object um, a rope, if you want, in three space that is somewhat, somewhat tangled in a certain way, and you close the ends. Uh, let me show you an animation why you really need to close the ends, because otherwise you can undo a knot easily. So here's the animation. Um, it successfully builds up a knot, and it doesn't quite close it, right? It doesn't quite close it, and as soon as you don't close the two ends together, we really want the ends to be closed, you can easily undo any knot and then kind of knot theory would be relatively boring because there wouldn't be any knots. So knot is really what you know from real life as a knot, just that both end, the ends are kind of glued together in order to make it non-trivial because otherwise you could undo any knot as we have seen in the nice video. And knots are usually pretty hard to draw <laughs> because they are three dimensional. It's still okay because they live in three space. So here in my background, are, of course I have three space. So what people usually do is you want a two-dimensional picture and you then study projections of knots, which in this picture here are those things here on the wall. So really shadows, if you want, you take some lightning and you project the shadow onto the onto a wall, you have a two-dimensional object and that's what you call a knot diagram. Um, so really two-dimensional objects. The only thing you additionally remember from the shadow is what, what, go, what strand goes over and what strand goes under, but otherwise it's really just a projection of the knot onto uh, two space, onto the plane, right? So onto R2. Really a nice projection on the knot onto R2. And then you would study equivalence classes of those because as you can already see here in this picture, depending on your projection, the projection actually might look different although it's the same knot. So we'll come up with some uh, relations on projections, which I'm not going into, but they're called randomized relations. And then you have a a two-dimensional version of knot theory, which is completely combinatorial in nature. The only thing you ever study are projections and their behaviors. And we'll see lots of we will see lots of projections here in this video, of course. And a standard question somehow you should always ask is what are the elements if you like chemistry, or what are the prime numbers if you more like number theory of knot theory? So what are the basic building blocks of knot theory or of any kind of theory you want? Very often, it doesn't have a really satisfying answer. Um, prime numbers are pretty cool. It has a pretty nice answer to the question. Uh, what are the prime numbers of number theory? They are prime numbers. Well, what are the elements of number theory? Of course, they are prime numbers. A very satisfying answer. And in term, in knot theory, actually, there's also a very satisfying answer. And that's the theorem for today. But let's uh, go there very slowly. So let's. So here's a dot projection. So that's what I would like to draw. Right, so this really is a two-dimensional version of a three-dimensional object, same, same here. And I have a multiplication operation on those, which is usually called the connected sum. And it's denoted by the hash symbol. I don't quite know why, but it's denoted by the hash symbol. Probably just people needed some symbol and why not hash? People, not many people use hash, so why not hash? Or at least not many people used hash uh, when the notion was invented. Anyway, I'm waffling. So connected sum hash. And it works as follows, pretty nice operation. You have one per knot and you have another knot and you build a little bridge between them. So I, I mark two parts of my knot, built, built a little bridge between them and then I shortcut. Uh, so I really just erase those edges here and put the others into the picture, right? I erased the, in this case, the uh, ver vertical edges and I put in horizontal edges. 
And by definition, I get a new projection here, a new diagram, which is then, um, so if this is K and this is L say, and this is K uh, hash, can I draw a hash? I can, K hash L. And right? so that's a multiplication operation on knots or it's like a multiplication operation on knots. So actually, uh, so like multiplication. So this question, what are the prime numbers kind of makes sense. And you would like to ask it for this version of the multiplication just to connect the sum. It's a pretty nice operation. It's, sometimes it is even easier than usual multiplication. Uh, you just take two knots and you take two, let's say horizontal vertical strands and to shortcut into two horizontal strands. So you, you do this type of operation. That's pretty, pretty nice actually. Okay, um, so here, for example, so if you take the knot K and you take the unknot, the unknot is just a stupid circle. The circle is not knotted and people call it the unknot. And as you can see, if you do this operation here, the hash operation, um, you could just undo the unknot. So it just has this little bump here and you can just pull it in and it's gone. So uh, the hash upper, so the unknot is the unit, the, the one object. Um, in this operation. So uh, the connect, connected sum of any knot with the unknot is any knot. Okay. So this is really kind of the unit operation. It's really like multiplication, it has a unit. Multiplication is also commutative and associ associative. I'm not going to show you associativity, it's a visualization exercise, but commutativity is actually pretty nice and also uh, kind of tells you why this is a well-defined operation. So anyone, we are seeing a little bit of math, we might want to stop me immediately when I tell you this picture, because uh, what, what would happen if I would choose this segment and this segment, I would still get kind of a huge bridge from here to here. I could do still the operation, but do I get the same knot? So is this operation actually well-defined? Not so clear, not immediately at least. And it's a beautiful proof, a really beautiful one, a very simple uh, pictorial proof that this is well defined, which uh, also proves that it's commutative. So if you have a not K and you have a not L and you would like to do the connected sum, you can actually think of one of those um, parts where you want to do this operation here. You can think of it as really stretched out. And then you just do your operation like down here and um, you get a picture that looks like this. And it actually really doesn't matter where you did it. So you could still slide the K and the L completely around everything. So in this case, you could just slide L now around all the way around and it would turn up here, which would show commutativity. You can also shrink L if you want, make it very small and push it onto K or whatever. So you can really show that it doesn't matter where you apply your um, vertical equals horizontal operation. It's well defined and it's commutative. Associativity is not much harder. I was just too lazy and I haven't found a nice picture that I could copy. So I'm not doing it here. And I'm calling it a visualization exercise. Point is this funny operation, which I find very beautiful, and pretty straightforward in some sense, uh, looks easier than multiplication to me. I don't need to know what seven times seven, seven times seven is not so hard. What a crazy multiplication is. Multiplication can be pretty crazy. Um, I only need to connect knots and I get the usual properties of a multiplication. I have a unit, it's commutative, it's associative. That's what, what people want of a, uh, well, what, are, what people want of a multiplication structure. And you are sure, now you can ask what are the prime numbers, right? It's a multiplication structure, what are the prime numbers? And a knot is called prime exactly if you can't um, factor it using a connected sum, right? So that's exactly how you would write down what a prime number is. Um, a non-trivial knot, so the unknot is not a prime knot, like one is not a prime number, Ah, a questionable definition, but let's just go with it. Uh, so the unknot is not a prime knot, one is not a prime number, and the definition of a prime knot or of a prime number is that you can't factor it into non-trivial factors. Really the same definition, and okay, that's not very surprising, that's how we wanted to build it anyway. Surprising, and these are now the theorems, here is that you get exactly the same statements as for numbers. Very, very cute. So first of all, um, there are infinitely many prime knots. This is not so trivial to see. Um, there are infinitely many prime numbers. It's also not so trivial to see, but you can prove it. And so here are a few, um, not quite, I just told you. Um, as you can see here from my story illustration, people don't agree whether one is a prime or not apparently, or whether the unknot is a prime knot or not. So because this claims 
the other node is a prime node. It's not everything else is a prime node on uh, this picture. For example, the trefoil, which is uh, in this notation, the three one node. Anyway, so there are infinitely many, like there are infinitely many primes. And like any number can be factored into primes, every node can be factored into prime nodes, into finitely many prime nodes. And like factorizations into primes is essentially unique, so you're up to permutation of factors, uh, factorization of nodes is essentially unique up to permutation of factors. So this is really the one-to-one -one equivalent of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic in terms of nodes, which I personally find is pretty cute. That's why it's on my list of favorite theorems. So really just the fundamental theorem of arithmetic in terms of nodes. And well, like for prime numbers, the analogy goes even further. Like for prime numbers, so um, it's usually not easy to decide what prime, what, what is a prime. So given a huge number, can you decide whether it's prime or not? Can you find its prime factors? Mm, hard questions in general. And the same is uh, true for, for uh, knots. It's actually pretty hard in general to determine whether a knot is a composite knot or not. So composite is the opposite of a prime knot. It's, it's not a prime knot. Um, so it's really hard to determine in general. It's a hard problem. And well, usually we are tricked if you look at examples. So this is kind of obviously a, a factor knot. You can just factor it into pieces. Um, so sometimes it's really, really easy to decide whether a knot is composite. Like it's easy to decide whether a number is a composite number. Like 10 is obviously a composite number. You can see it immediately, it's divisible by two. Same for prime knots. And very much like for prime numbers, we have got a fooled by two small examples. So among the first 100 numbers, there are quite a few prime numbers. And basically you can tell just looking at the numbers, whether they're prime or not. The same is true for most small knots. Um, it's not so hard, but in general, this is a really, really hard problem to determine the prime factors of knot theory. Anyway, so my theorem today was really this analogy, this beautiful one-to-one -one analogy to the theor fundamental theorem of arithmetic in knot theory. So let me just call it the fundamental theorem of knot theory, which is not the name, by the way. It's just, just what I call it now. Um, so the prime factorization of any knot into prime knots, and that's essentially unique. I find this really uh, exciting and really nice, really cute theorem. And I hope you like it as well. And I also hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.